Hi, this is John from Flatcat Gear. Uh, today we're talking about uh, improvising wind blocks for uh, canisters top stoves. And what I'm using here as my example is the uh, BRS 3000T, a very popular uh, lightweight stove. All over the internet, you'll find people talking about uh, canister top stoves and improving efficiency and all kinds of uh, suggestions and ideas out there. And uh, no one's ever measured it. They talk about it, but there's no, nothing to, there's no data to support what they're talking about. So today I'm going to be running some tests uh, to show whether they're real or they're myths, what works, what doesn't work. A couple of things I'm not going to be testing. Um, a lot of people talk about using a tent, you know, cooking inside your vegetable, uh, backpack, your uh, sleeping pad. Um, I'm not going to be testing those. A couple of reasons. I go backpacking in the Sierras. A lot of it is a bear wear. And so the uh, NPS guidelines say that your, uh, where you sleep, where you prep your food, and where you store your food should be separated by at least 25 feet. Uh, I've seen other recommendations saying 25 yards. I've seen other recommendations saying 100 yards. Um, that being said, I keep my food prep away from uh, everything's associated with sleeping. So uh, not near a tent, not near as uh, a backpack, and I don't use my sleeping pad. Now, if you're not in bare wear areas, you're welcome to use those. It's just in general, because of eliminating those means you really have to improvise. So the first thing I tested was how well does the stove perform um, if I just use what, what's around as a wind block? And so <clears throat> what I did was I found this log, it's about seven inches in diameter, and I tested that. And so here are the results. As you can see, um, it's okay. It's not great. One of the things that you'll notice, though, in this test is that this is keeping the canister one inch away from the log. Maybe unrealistic, but that's what we did for our test. Now, results are, are not bad. Uh, next thing we did was we went to a 12-inch diameter log, and here are the results of that. And, and as you can see, the results are pretty good. Now, the chance of getting, you know, one inch away from a, a tree, uh, especially one that's 12 inches diameter, is pretty slim because of the root structure and trying to make sure it's level. So then we also tested it at six inches away from a 12 inch diameter tree, and here are the results. As you can see, it, it's not very impressive. So what else, what other tricks can we use? So the next thought was, well, since I'm in the Sierras, uh, I typically take a bear canister with me. So I uh, tested it three ways. We tested it with the bear canister vertical, the bear canister perpendicular to the stove, and we tested it with the bear canister uh, with the stove at the blunt end. And again, these are all one inch away from the object. <clears throat> Here are the results from those tests. And you can see that the bear canister actually did worse than a 12 inch diameter tree. Now, a lot of that, you know, hypothesized has to do with the roughness of the tree and the bark. And so, you know, they're, you're better off using a tree if you can get it within one inch. Again, even vertically uh, was the best results, but if you move the bear canister, bear can away by six inches, it falls off a cliff. It's just terrible. So, the last thing we tried was you when know, I use the uh, freeze-dried food container. Um, so we did the test. Now, a couple caveats to that is number one, in an eight mile an hour wind, the pouch will, will blow over you. In fact, you, you know, even on a flat surface, uh, it won't stand up straight. And so we ended up having to clamp the edges to get it one inch away. And what we did, we tested it one inch away and at six inches away, to see the difference, and here are the results. Um, you can see if you get the food pouch uh, close enough to within one inch, it's not bad. Uh, anything further away though, like the bear canister, it drops off like a rock. Here's the um, ocelot for the BRS 3000 in eight mile an hour wind, and you can see uh, that it, it consumed about 16 grams of fuel and uh, boiled pretty quickly. 
So there you have it. You can try improvising a windscreen um, with what you have. It'll probably still consume three to four times the amount of fuel you're used to, uh, but you can get it to boil, uh, but it has to be close. So come visit us at www.flatcatcare.com.